Okay, so it looks like we upset somebody. Uh, we've I got a good number that. of Canadians calling in. Let's talk to talk to Mr. Le Chef in Canada. Um, it says that they don't think we should call Jesus a zombie. Okay. Well, I think I, I said Happy Zombie Jesus Day early on. All right, we're bringing you on, Mr. Le Chef. Yeah. Hi. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Thank you for calling in. Uh, perfect. So, perfect. So, so was this because I said Happy Zombie Jesus Day earlier? Yeah, but it's uh, it's quite interesting. I'm wondering uh, what's your uh, your um, train of thought that led you to come with this uh, statement because uh, today is not the day Jesus resurrected because uh, he didn't die on Friday because he said uh, the prophecy of three days and three nights. Well, that's not from Friday to Sunday. It's not three days and three nights. And second of all, Jesus is alive and he is Lord over all nations. Did so, he? Did, did, did he? Two reasons. Um, two reasons. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Well, according to your theology, did he die? Oh, uh, he definitely died. And did he rise from the dead? Definitely. I'm not pretty, on Sunday, though. Well, it doesn't. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I can give or take that part, but that sounds okay. like that sounds so like it's a. Not, it's not the day. It's not today, then. Okay, so, so Jesus so, was a zombie on another day. Yeah, I, I mean, also after that, there are accounts of Jesus still having the crucifixion holes and people investigating the body of Jesus while it was walking around upright and still having all of the indications of, you know, here are the things that killed me, right? Yeah. What like, does that have to do with a zombie? That sounds like a zombie to me. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know about zombies. If we're going to entertain the idea, I don't know about zombies going through walls. Do you? There are a lot of different types of zombies in, in, in fiction. Oh, come on. I, 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 <laughs> you know about zombies going through walls? Well, if, if I'm going to entertain this idea, which movie did you see a zombie go through a wall? I, you could say he's a ghost. Well, And I could entertain that better. Okay. Ha happy, happy spooky ghost Jesus day. Okay, so at least at least we're we're, we're progressing. Well, I mean, <laughs> so, so 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 here's 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 the reason I bring it up. The reason I bring it up is I, it's obviously tongue in cheek, um, and it's a way of pushing back against a system that has um, done a lot of hurt. I mean, for people who have come out of the faith, there's a lot of okay. damage that a lot of people need to undo. And the idea, especially here, right? Uh, you're in Canada over here in Texas. It is yeah. a big deal. It is a big deal, and it has everything to do with whether or not you're allowed to participate in a lot of different parts of society out here. And so the idea of religion needing to be something that you just need to respect, period, it's tough. And so that casual disrespect is kind of taking yeah. the power back for me. I, I understand what you're saying, and I kind of, uh, well, I don't respect it, but I understand your perspective. But yeah. I, what if I told you the Christianity of this world, whether Catholic or any other denomination, the 40,000 denominations, scripturally, I can de demonstrate that they're not Christians. Because according to Christianity, it says that we'll be hated by all the world. So when you're saying that this is a cultural or a part of society or uh, part of the government construct, that is going against scripture. So well, your 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 hatred against the system is not really against Christianity. Your hatred is against those who hijack the religion. Interesting. Okay, so have you heard of the no true Scotsman fallacy? Go ahead. Well, I uh, uh, educate me. I don't I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. So, V, do you want to I feel like I've presented it a bajillion times, but it's important in this case. Uh uh uh-huh. Um well, oh, okay. Uh we'll we'll leave the the God, therefore, Tuesday stuff for later. Yeah, I I, I feel like that that, that <laughs> um, bit of, of, of stuff. Whoa, 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 what does that mean? Uh, you remember me? I'm the Mr. Delisier guy. Yeah, <laughs> you remember me? Oh, yeah, I, I know who you are. Uh, oh, jeez! So my people were entertained. My people were entertained with our dialogue. I clipped it <laughs> and I did my own little video. I it was saw. quite delicious. I saw it, it. It was a little bit dishonest, wouldn't you say? How? Give me one example. If, and if that's the case, I will remove it. Give me one example. Well, 
Let's I, not use the term cherry picking because that's been overdone in atheist circles. I, I, so, but what did I what did I cherry pick? If you show me one place, if you give me one instance where I misrepresented your, because th that would go against me. Uh, that would show that I'm not a Christian. If you're saying that I showed a lack of integrity in the video, let's not talk about the little fun and the little ad libs I did or the little uh, uh, things I added to the video, which didn't change the context. If you're telling me I added something to change the context of the discussion, I will remove the video right now and i will do a video apologizing well i appreciate that uh it's been a long time so i could not pull an exact comment from right now but uh okay. fair Can, point okay so I, I i i know we have a lot of different directions we're and, going all over the place and i'm here. glad you're excited which is fantastic i want to kind of mine that <laughs> and, and dive into that because those are the best calls um so here's here here's my issue um, I think that a Christian is somebody who calls themselves a Christian, somebody who self-identifies, um, because I think that Mormons view themselves as Christians, and they would view okay. non-Mormons as not Christians, that there are many denominations who would say, well, I'm the true Christian, and everyone else isn't. Um, and okay. it, it, it's kind of a, an arbitrary set of rules that everybody is kind of making up for themselves. Heck, when I was in church, I definitely believed that we had the, the, the right of it. We had the correct formula. And everyone else, while they might call themselves Christian, they weren't, they weren't real Christians. And I feel like okay. that's something that's so in common everywhere that I think you would need to have some really spectacular uh, reason to exempt yourself because I feel like so many people spend so much time trying to exempt themselves and to um, condemn everyone else. You know what I mean? Like, do, could you imagine me pointing out verses in the Bible to try and say that you're not the true Christian? You won't be able to. That's the point. You see, the difference, uh, I have a clearly stipulated uh, uh, parameters in Scripture that determines who are the true Christians. It says clearly those who keep, uh, keep the seven-day Sabbath and who believe in the three persons of the Godhead, as per Matthew 16, Isaiah 56, verse 6 and 7, Ezekiel 20, 12, Ezekiel 20, 20. These are specific verses that demonstrate or stipulate who are the true Christians. So, and he's, and this also stipulates those who would hijack his name, claiming to be Christians, mm -hmm. and would hate people like us. Right. So, and I can demonstrate my position, or substantiate my position. You said, uh, while you were a Christian, you were able to do that. I doubt you would be. Uh, you were able in the past, and you certainly won't be able today. Because you would not be able to quote any verse that will put me outside of the, the, the fold. Okay. But I can I, do that with the rest of Christianity. I, I uh, So-called Christianity. Challenge accepted. Jacket's coming off. I'm rolling up the sleeves. I'm putting on my Christian hat. Let's do this. Wow. Let's All right. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Sure. I'm getting out of the way. I'm moving over. So, um... Did Jesus? We're, we're going mano to mano. Yeah. So 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 we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, New Testament, um, and I'm gonna say, did Jesus come to change one jot or tittle of the law? No. No. Um, what does it mean to fulfill a law? Uh, to fulfill the law, uh, it says it in Isaiah 42 that he came to expound, or uh, Deuteronomy 1 5, a prophet, what it do he does, he has the power by the Holy Spirit to expound on the law. So he came to magnify the law, and he did that example when he say, stated uh, if uh, you, uh, you commit adultery, if you commit the action of adultery, but also if you even have the thought of adultery. So he okay. expounded on the law, and you need to make it clear there's a distinction between the Ten Commandments, which is the covenant, as per Deuteronomy 5.22, as opposed to the rest of the 613 laws, which, at the, which is at the side of the covenant, which is not eternal, as per Deuteronomy 31.26. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Hold yeah, on. I, I, it, I, 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 yeah. I don't think you're no, 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 no. for this, but go ahead. No, no, it, it's, ahead. it's okay. It, it, what, what's funny is I know that you're prepared for the objection that I'm about to bring, um, okay. but... But at the same time, I'm also trying. Sorry, I, I got a note. I needed to check. Um, no problem. So, so while I can tell that you're you're ready for battle on this one, we also have an audience that we want to bring along for the ride. So I'm. Oh no problem. So I, I'm, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so, that, that is wise of you. That is yeah. wise of you. So 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 why why I'm going slow is because I want to make sure that I'm bringing everybody. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So you my. I'm, I'm sure you know where I was going with this, and so people know where I'm going with this. Um, it's written, there are a ton of laws written in Leviticus. 
um, those laws were um, supposedly given by God to Moses um, to give the people during the Exodus. And those were to be the laws that, that God commanded. It has a lot of really, really weird stuff and a lot of people, a lot of stuff that people don't follow today. Uh, Christians call them the Mosaic laws uh, because they came from Moses. Um, and a lot of atheists point to the Mosaic laws and go, hey, do you eat shellfish? Do you wear mixed fabrics? Do you, yeah. you know, um, uh, 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 plant two uh, kinds of crops in, in the, the same, same field. field? And if you do that, then you are not following Mosaic law. Um, and so yeah. my, my first thing that I want to try and do is shoehorn you and burden you with Mosaic law okay. because. Jesus didn't come to change it, right? Uh, most people say, oh, well, Jesus fulfilled the law, which eradicates Mosaic law. And yet, mm. right, if you get pulled over by a police officer, is the police officer fulfilling the law? I think they are. They're executing it. They're, 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 they're making it happen. Judges also fulfill the law. But, I agree. but fulfilling I agree. the law does not eradicate the law. I agree 100%. Right. And I feel that that's, that's um, underscored by the whole not changing a jot or a tittle and by your example actually you can expand upon things but the idea of wiping those things out doesn't really make sense and so again my goal is to saddle you with the levitical mosaic laws do you feel like a christian must follow the mosaic laws uh some of them and let me explain because i gave the answer before you you went on your um your um objection what we'll call it or your example sure. um, first of all there are some laws that are because the levitical law was given to the levites when there was a temple uh, a temple there's no temple so there are certain laws that we can keep and certain laws that we can't keep for example i gave you an example in deuteronomy 522 which says the law the covenant is only the ten commandments i gave you another example is distinct from the mosaic law as per deuteronomy 31 26 which is a, a witness against us which is not eternal Psalms 119, 89 says the Ten Commandments, which is in the Ark of the Covenant in heaven, is eternal. So anything that proceeds from the Ten Commandments is the law that I am judged by or I keep in my heart. So that is the law that we keep. So as far as eating shellfish, I would keep that law. But there's certain laws as per the uh, um, the fabric, where in fabric I don't see any spiritual um, um, benefit from that. So I wouldn't have to keep that law. And again, there are no Levites today. Therefore, there's nobody who would be able to uh, exercise that law, uh, the law and the punishments that come with it. So again, does it, uh, to keep it simple, I don't want to have to give uh, cause I, no, no, no. a church right now. The, uh, uh, there's, uh, a uh, distinction, there's a distinction between the Ten Commandments m- and the Mosaic Law. Mr. Lashaf, um, yeah. can I call you something other than Mr. Lashaf? That is... For some reason, very you difficult. Could you could call me Terry. Jerry, is that okay, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, I think V is ready to dive in, and I want. I'm. I'm just. I'm just enjoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you go, uh, uh, just one thing, uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you understand my uh, my 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 response? And I hope because you want to bring the crowd in. There's yeah. The distinction between the Ten Commandments and the Mosaic Law. The Ten I... Commandments is eternal. The Mosaic Law is not. So, if you understand that distinction. Then that's a response to your your question. Okay, so you think that Christians should only follow the Ten Commandments and everything that proceeds from it. So again, okay. uh, Deuteronomy five or one five sure. says uh, a prophet, which all the prophets, all the books, Isaiah, David, they expound on what the Ten Commandments are, as Jesus did. So everything that proceeds from the Ten Commandments, we must keep as well, because okay. it's like a seed, well, and once you uh, hey, water Jerry, it, Jerry. it becomes a plant. Jerry, so that's that's what it is. Yeah, go ahead. We got to try and shorten it that way we can get the chance to bounce back yeah, and no, forth. No, no, Otherwise, no, I, I give yeah. you the response. Go ahead. No worries. So, um, <laughs> so do you think that um, your God wrote laws for people, but then kind of changed his mind? Um, do you think I, that an eternal God would have an eternal, you know, opinion, or do you think God changes their opinion? I, I, didn't, I, I think I, my response was quite clear that there is no change. The law, the Ten Commandments, and everything that proceeds from it is eternal. I never said it was a change of, uh, of thought, a change, well, uh, change of mind. I'm not, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm, you, you, you're, you're, okay, you're, okay. Right. You, you, you're, okay. You, you, you specifically brought up the uh, Mosaic Laws as being for a specific people. Um, and I'm just wondering how... No, no, I didn't say that. 
I didn't say specific people. Wasn't that for oh, the oh, Levites? For the Levites. Right. That's a, no that's Levites. a specific people. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. So okay, go ahead. Okay. So do you think an eternal being, right, would have certain morals that they think are right today and then have maybe different morals that they think are right tomorrow? No, and that, and I don't see how my explanation would even uh, allow you to come with such a conclusion. Uh, well, remember, God is eternal, well, and I'm, He engages with time and space, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Engages with. Oh, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Yeah, got, got you. I, so I'm, I'm trying to build the groundwork here. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. I, I, I know you're excited to dive in. Um, the groundwork that I'm trying to build is one that would say that if a God thought that, let's say you should have really good rules for how to buy and own slaves okay that that god wouldn't change their opinion or you know say I that agree. it would be right 100%. for one person versus another people right I agree. The, the the problem with that is it's based on a false premise. Uh we don't believe uh the law uh uh permitted the uh, the the buying of slaves, but instead the buying of servants who willingly gave themselves as servants. As per, uh, I could give you four examples. Number one, I, I no example is. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I, I want you to finish. Give you four points. I give you four points. That sure. way, I could destroy the slavery argument. Because <laughs> I've done this and I already re refuted Dr. Joshua Bowen uh, face to face. He was oh. choking. So. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, you should tell him uh, about the video. He knows about it as well. He saw it. Uh, so uh, it's four points. Number one, there's no example in scripture where somebody is forced into slavery outside of the, uh, the context of war. Number one. Number two, the purpose of servants was for them to be part of the commonwealth of Israel as per Exodus 12, uh, 18, uh, 19, 48, and 49. Number three, uh, servants were allowed to own Israelites as servants Israelites who became poor, so they would uh, uh, become servants of uh, of strangers or uh, of what you call so-called slaves. As per uh, Leviticus 25, verse 47 and 48, and the purpose of uh, of being a servant, number three, is for them to be strengthened by Israel, so that they would know the law of God. As per uh, uh, Leviticus 25, 35, and finally, servants or so-called slaves are allowed to own territory or inheritance within the commonwealth of israel as per uh, ezekiel 40, uh, 47 verse 23. for okay. these four points i just enumerated mm -hmm. the slavery you're referring to is not consistent with what scripture reveals okay. it's not something forced they they are able to own uh, uh, uh Israelites. Well, I, 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 they're I, able to own land and it was the purpose was for them to become part of the commonwealth of israel okay so so let's let's tackle that just a little bit um, first off, uh, in the United States, it is a very, very racist trope that people have brought out that slavery was just fine because it civilized the African people. That's something I that... Wait, you agree with what? I agree that it, it was uh, uh, it's racist. Uh, what happened in the, in the Americas oh. was something that is the demonic, devilish. I okay. agree with that. Okay, that okay. sounds that sounds like exactly what your point was. That, yeah, that, they're 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 bringing them into the commonwealth or yeah, whatever you called it. That, That's the same thing. No, it willingly, sounds like exactly willingly. They came willingly. No, no, they yeah. were. You said you said it was a result of war. Yeah. It, what if, about the little thirteen-year-old? No, 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 what? No. I said outside of the context of war. Uh, right. Please don't, don't misrepresent me. I what? said outside of. You will not find an example of somebody being forced into slavery outside of the context of war. Okay, well, Everything else is in the context of... Okay, uh, I don't uh, care. Uh, so I don't okay. care if it's in the context of war. Yeah, j saying you should... Oh, say no, 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 no. Saying that you should take the little girls that have not known a man for yourselves doesn't it doesn't matter if it's in the context of war or not. It's wrong. It doesn't say that. It says it that. It doesn't say that. The no, the That's Hebrew, a lie. I, I would advise... I have a video on that also. You don't Larry, know the word Hebrew task? Jerry, whatever your name Hebrew is. Task? Whatever your name okay. is, lying is bad. That's that's one I of the know, sins the that you were talking about, right? I, it's, against, it's against the commandments. Uh, uh, Do you know the Hebrew word for uh, a little girl? Well, okay. it's Could not. Because the, Hebrew... the Hebrew word used in uh, in uh, in uh, 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 Numbers thirty one is taf. Do you know what the the definition of the word taf in Hebrew? Because if you don't know, you can't make the argument. Tell okay. me what it means. <laughs> so you don't know. Okay, hold exactly. on. It, it, it hold can on. mean family. Okay. It can mean family. 
and the and the next word next to it is female. So explain to me what the conjunction n or within. So explain to me how could taf mean little girls? Oh, so according oh, to your oh, definition, oh, oh, oh. Or yes. Your oh, I would be happy to shut up for a second, and I'll tell you. Okay, what ages did females get married back then? It was when they were very young. So somebody who had not known a man was by definition a young girl. Show me that in scripture. Uh, th I mean, I just did. That just logically follows. No, no, you didn't. Sh no, no. The number 31, uh, we're, we're contending whether it says young girl. I'm saying it doesn't say young girl. Okay. I'm so, saying that I, anybody who knows uh, anything about the time period would know that that was young girl. You cannot oh, get semantic on me here. Over, over generalization? Isn't that the fallacy of over -gener uh, generalization? No, it's not at all. You're saying because it was common in the, in the time, that means everyone was doing it? That's not logically sound. Come on now. You can do better oh, than that. Okay. All I'm saying is contextually and linguistically, you cannot say a young girl. Okay. Because I'm telling you. Contextually, the word it is young girl. And so, you are being well, can I, can dishonest I, here. Can, 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 can I go zoom to out number real quick? 31, uh, 3117, okay. Hebrew and Telinear, verify the information the, the lady is saying. You'll find Jerry? out that she's, she doesn't know what she's talking about. They. Uh, these pronouns are they, them. Uh, so, Jerry, I kind of want to zoom out just a little bit here. I, I know that you're responding to V, um, but I also have a question. Go ahead. Okay. So, regardless of the age of a person, in the context yeah. of war, do you think it is right to take slaves? Uh, to, to take captives? Yeah. To take slaves? I believe so, yes. To take captives. To take slaves. I, 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 the, word, the, words, uh, the word, as you're saying it, abed in Hebrew means servant or slave, depending on the context. In this context, I would say is the word servant. Uh, okay. Or you can say captives, because when you continue reading Numbers 31, 17, you see that they were given offices of a high prestige. For example, the young girls, according to the madam here, uh, well, hold, uh, were given offices the, inside of temples, in, inside of the temple for temple service. That's the highest uh, glory you can receive ha. as a, a person. Yeah, as fuck a person. that. And you uh, are- And they're called women, and they're called women in that very same uh, chapter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To let you know. Yeah. Uh, Jerry. Fuck all of that. Jerry. I. <laughs> I I need you to respect these pronouns. I here. think we need to move on. And We've got twenty you, minutes left. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, what, what, what did I say? Uh, uh, against V. Uh, so, so you. We're continue. not getting into that right now. He doesn't deserve that kind of a gracious explanation. We're moving on. Can we move on, please? No yeah, problem. absolutely, Jerry. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Bye. I appreciate. Ah. Oh. That's an argument that I haven't gotten to have in a long time. It, it's it's not it's not an ontological one because I don't accept the claims of the Bible, but it's a argument based on inconsistencies within the Bible itself. I mean, talk about cherry picking. Yeah. Oh, I've decided that everything from Leviticus five onward is what I agree with, and not the rest, because I've determined that it's not spiritually necessary. Well, and and the overgeneralization of everyone who was a slave getting those offices. In fact, I think that- Oh the, yes, the, being a temple prostitute was definitely something that people from another freaking area wanted to do. Like, yeah, high honor. Well, also, you know- Under um, pain of fucking death. Like, Well, speaking of pain of death, the idea of being able to beat your slaves and it being totes cool so long as they don't die within three days, or that um, you know, if somebody injures another person's slave, it's treated as property and needs to be uh, the the owner of that slave needs to be compensated fairly for the damage to the property. Uh, people shouldn't be owned as property. Also, like the idea that there was a that I mean, regardless of the age of the person being sold into sexual servitude, let's say, because you dislike the word slavery. You, at what age is that okay? Like, even if I were to grant the stupidity of the argument that I just heard, like, why would that even be okay to be like, oh, well, they were full grown women who were being raped. Yeah, and even if even if you were to argue that it wasn't sexual servitude, it's still servitude. It's, you know, owning a person uh, and, and treating them as property in any context is not okay. But that, again, that is, I think, a person who obviously has better morals than the God that is described in, um, in, in Numbers. Usually I Acts, agree with that, Kings, but in this case, Leviticus. I doubt it. Um, yeah, and also the chapter and verse sounds really great when you're a Christian, but for, yeah.
It really, like, it really just shouts <sighs> that you are not comfortable moving outside of the things that you have recited in the mirror. You know what this tells me, though? This what? tells me next time there's a conversation with someone about this, let's not go with slavery. It sounds like um, we should go with something else. You know, if somebody is already primed to dig in, then getting those kind of gears churning to question a thing and, and explore um, kind of stops. And so maybe that, you know, slavery argument has calcified a bit and we need to find other And You know, on the one hand, I, I absolutely agree. We need to be able to move people in new directions or else we're going to stagnate. But at the same time, I would very much like to know if somebody thinks that kidnapping a woman and forcing her to be your wife is wrong or not before I continue having a conversation with them. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I Well, I, I, I don't know. See, that's the discomfort of it is because I do know that there were points in time where I took positions that I really felt yucky about and things that I currently disagree with and yet i felt compelled to 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 repeat those until it was uncomfortable enough for me to really question them and yeah so, and if i get the sense that that's actually what's happening then cool maybe i'll give you a little bit of leeway but that's not what was happening here fair enough just as long as that's not a general statement but you can see where it could be useful <sighs> okay 